critical mistakes. And then the other stat that stands out to me, and it was the same thing when these two teams played in Cincinnati a month ago, Pittsburgh 70 yards rushing in the first half, Cincinnati only 15. And that does not bode well in the second half, trying to play comeback and catch up and trying to block T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith on a consistent basis. Evan McPherson, haven't even seen him yet today, will kick it off. UK is back to receive it, lets it fly in the end zone for another touchback as we go down to KT. Yeah, no, and it is starting to rain a little bit here on the sidelines, but I just spoke to Zach Taylor. He said he told his team at the half it's all about one play at a time. He said defensively, they opened up the game with two big plays. We have to find a way to slow them down. I asked him how they can get T. Higgins the ball and get him more involved on offense. He said we need everyone involved right now. Noah? All right, Kate team. Zach Taylor knew that this was going to be a challenge. He knew that this Steelers team was motivated, and certainly AFC North matchups are always different. He actually he said that there's different rules based on which opponent you've got, and he knew that Pittsburgh, especially defensively, was not going to make that screen game easy, and offensively, he expected their best shot, which they've got. Here's a screen pass for Jalen Warren on first down, and Warren snakes his way through the defense, spun down across the him. I'm going to give that a 50-50, <laughs> okay? I think he's a 50-50 guy on a play like that. He's just got such incredible hands, body control. You mentioned the word acrobatic, contested catches. We've seen him do it all. Harris on the give, second and four. Got stopped initially and then surges forward to make it third and one. See, this is the difference right now. It's Zach Taylor telling KT, we've got to find a way to slow them down, stop them. They have not been able to slow the run down. And because of that, Pittsburgh has had favorable third down situations, and it's taken pressure off of Mason Rudolph. And he's not dropping back, having to throw it every down because the running game, they've had balance in their offensive attack so far. Henderson's been fairly quiet, went off for a couple of snaps before coming back in there. Third down and one to start this third quarter for Pittsburgh. Harris up the gut and he plows forward for the first down. You know, it's interesting with Najee Harris. You hear anybody talk about him now. They say he's a power inside between the tackles, north south runner. When he first went to Alabama out of California, he wanted to bounce everything. He wanted to be a perimeter runner. And I think he's realized with his body type and his style and the fact that the guys run real fast in this league, he's better off focusing on between the tackles. And he is really. Enhance his game because of that. Harris up to 53 yards in the touchdown, 5.3 yards per carry. Rudolph, and he has a connection to Miles Boykin. See, that's kind of a change of pace. Boykin is normally in there when they're running the football. He is a blocking wide receiver. They broke a tendency that time and threw it. Boykin not only is in there for a pass play, but he gets the ball thrown his way. Boykin he, has emerged as kind of a jack of all trades in some respects for this team. Jake Browning has to patiently or really impatiently wait for his chance to get back out there and hope that his defense can come away with a stop against the Pittsburgh offense that has looked probably the best they have all season. Robinson, the motion man on second and four. Another handoff for Harris. And he will bulldoze his way to the 45. Well, Mike Tomlin in his 17th season as the head coach here. It's still hard to believe because you always look at him and think that he's the young guy. He yeah. came in as the young guy for the longest time. He was the young coach. He's 51 years old now. He's never had a losing season, hoping to keep that streak alive. And just so perfect for what this city embodies has been that way really every step of the way and believes wholeheartedly in Mason Rudolph as evidenced by what he said to KT at the end of the half. Here's a third and two for Rudolph dialing up another deep ball he overthrows Calvin Austin who had a step on DJ Turner. Well this was supposed to be a short throw as well defended by the Bengals. And it was kind of a double clutch move by Rudolph. And at the last minute, he's going to take a shot at Austin. This was not a deep route by design. You could see Pickens running a short route, Friermuth running a short route. Everybody was covered. 
And this is in essence throwing the ball away. So Harvin will get it away for Charlie Jones and he will make the fair catch just in front. They have not won in the division. They are 0-4 within the AFC North. Zach Taylor knows that's irrelevant. This is a game that regardless of the opponent, you got to have to be a playoff team. And that's a big play. T. Higgins. Wow. Extends. Higgins is gone. It's a Higgins house call. Touchdown. 80 yards. Well, this is zone and not man. So it's not Joey Porter Jr. who is out there. I mean, he's on the field, but he's in zone coverage. Here's Porter. But as this route comes in, he's going to turn him loose to an inside defender. And you can see the inside linebacker, Mikel Walker, number 38, got all twisted around. Again, no Alandon Roberts on the inside. Miles Jack just off the practice squad. Mikhail Walker in there, and he got turned around on that play. Longest play of the career of T. Higgins. Of course, in a contract year this year, but so much talk about his play. He had a huge fourth quarter in overtime last week to help them win the game. Had that touchdown with 39 seconds left, extending it across the goal line. And now they'll go for two to try to make this a two score game. Browning surveys. Browning extending the play. Shovel. He's got it. Joe Mixon, creative from Jake Browning. Well, nice presence by Jake Browning. It has not been a good game for him so far with the two interceptions. He gets the pass to Higgins. Now he doesn't panic on the two-point conversion. He knows he can't run it in there because Highsmith will tackle him. Eyes moving from option one, option two, option three, finds Higgins for the long score. Yeah, eyes moving and feet always ready to throw, and he hits that back foot and delivers a strike, and T. Higgins comes through when they need it. You know, last year, they beat Pittsburgh here. Chase was not in the game. Higgins had nine catches over 140 yards, was their main weapon. King in, and they got the start they wanted, but this second half hasn't been a continuation from what we saw the first two quarters. We'll see if Mason Rudolph can get his team back on the horse. Rudolph rolls, flips, Darnell Washington makes the grab, and will turn it upfield for eight. A good decision again by Rudolph. It's a three-man route. The two deeper routes are both covered. And Washington is the third choice. He's going to block, block, and then release. And Rudolph gets him the football. Cam Sample applied the pressure. Rudolph, I've mentioned it, the records he had at Oklahoma State, winning his quarterback in school history, 32-9 and nine when he started inactive the first 12 games of the season first action last week so it's week 16 in 2021 oh the Rousier in coverage beautiful throw by rudolph and nobody in this stadium right now gives a flip whether george pickens blocks <laughs> on a running play 66 yards he's got 195 and boswell makes it 31 8 lights for this Pittsburgh offense got 195 yards two touchdowns and the Steelers back up by 23 points well it's out Browning throws it up for grabs again two times two interceptions caused by Alex Heisman it feels like it's been the main difference in this game major pressure and Watt bats it down TJ Watt lives in your backfield boy just bull rushes Jonah Williams the right tackle Gets all the way into the backfield, and he does this as well as anybody, too. Knocks the ball at the line of scrimmage. Here's Highsmith working on the other side against Orlando Brown, and these two guys are a nightmare when you're behind like this on the scoreboard and you can't run the football. Browning back to the air over the middle, back to Higgins. We'll reel that in and set up third and short. You know, it's interesting because when we were talking to Mike Tomlin, he said, you know, teams in this division, they know each other, they make roster moves and business decisions based on who they play. So they know they've got T.J. Watt, and they know they got Alex Highsmith. And last year, Highsmith had a field day against the Bengals. Jonah Williams was a left tackle. So what do the Bengals do? They go and get 
Orlando Brown from the Chiefs is an unrestricted free agent to come in and play left tackle. And he's got his hands full today with Alex Highsmith as well. Tomlin told Highsmith, you better be like Michael Jordan in the last dance. Take it personally. Go one on one with that matchup. Here's a third and two for Browning. Rainbow delivery, and it's Higgins for a first down. Good protection that time. Highsmith dropped into coverage. It's zone coverage. Browning's going to know that he's going to have time because Highsmith's going to drop out. It's a four man rush. He's got time. Watts there late, but he hangs in there long enough to hit Higgins. Higgins had that short catch earlier in the game. He's now over 100 yards. <laughs> had an 80 yeah. yard touchdown on the slant on the previous possession. Again, Cincinnati has moved the ball well. Can they cash it in and draw closer? Browning just so poised. Flag comes in a sample, makes the catch, turns it up along the sideline, and forced out of bounds inside the 40. We'll wait on the penalty. I think Pittsburgh has played more zone early in this game than Cincinnati was Offside. expecting. Offside. Defense, number 56. The penalty's declined. The result of the play is the first down. Call it on Alex Highsmith. Just a little quick off the mark. But with this kind of a lead, they can continue to play zone defense. They don't have to take chances, and they don't have to commit extra bodies in the run defense because the Bengals have not been able to run the football. Higgins, the motion man, has come alive now in this second half. Browning, feeling the pressure, dump it down, tipped up, nearly picked. A sigh of relief, Miles Jack in his return to action, nearly had one. Well, this time it was Herbig in for Highsmith, the rookie out of Wisconsin who's going to get pressure. He's there, and affects the throw of Jake Browning. He beats Orlando Brown, and just around the feet of the quarterback affects the accuracy of the throw, and Miles Jack almost comes up with the third interception of the day for the Steelers. You can see it based on the reaction every time it happens, but I'm not sure there's a worse feeling from a defensive player than dropping a tipped interception like that. <laughs> Miles Jack felt it there. Second and ten. Bengals get away with one. Browning across the field. Another dangerous throw is knocked away by Chandon Sullivan. Zone defense and good pressure. That's been the recipe for Pittsburgh in this ballgame. They've gotten enough pressure on Jake Browning, and they've handled the run so they can keep two safeties back and play mostly zone. And it's worked to perfection so far. McPherson has a big leg, career high of 59 yards, season high 56. Right now, it would be in the 54 range. Third and 10. Browning standing tall in the pocket over the middle. Tanner Hudson, well short for the first down, but it does get an extra couple yards for a potential field goal or decision now on fourth down. That time, Pittsburgh decided to only rush three and drop eight. Just need to make a tackle ahead of the sticks, and they did. Cincinnati electing to go for it here on fourth down. We've seen Browning's command of the huddle improve over the last three weeks after his first start of his career against Pittsburgh. Second fourth down chance of the day. Missed out on the fourth and inches in the first half. Browning on fourth and five. Lofts it. Sideline. Incomplete. Out of bounds for Higgins. And the Steelers get another stop on fourth down. NFL for more details. A commercial free fourth quarter. Game is exclusively on Peacock. To see one of the hottest teams in the NFL travel on the road. Harris looking to bounce it to the outside, and he does get positive yardage. Looked like he was dead to rights in the backfield, and he dragged D.J. Turner forward for a couple. Yeah, I mean, D.J. Turner did his job for the Bengals. He's got to set the edge of the defense. He can't let anything get outside. The only problem is Najee Harris is a big dude, and so he not only gets a stiff arm in there, he just is a hard guy to wrap up, and even though Turner did his job, Najee Harris still turned it into a four-yard game. Rudolph, play action on second down. 
pocket collapses. Hendrickson gets two arms around him, and Rudolph is dumped. And some extracurricular here. Hendrickson and Broderick Jones, the rookie, first round pick out of Georgia. Here's Hendrickson again working on Dan Moore, the left tackle, and Mason Rudolph kind of moved into that sack, but nobody opened downfield. Good coverage downfield by the Bengals, and they get to the quarterback. Sets up third down and 12. Towards the playoff probability, as big of any storyline in this no, game no. for these two teams. It's a, essentially a must-win game for the Steelers, and they put themselves in position. Mason Rudolph, a big reason why. This one's going to be incomplete. Great coverage by Turner on Deontay Johnson, and a three-and-out force by this Cincinnati defense. So the Bengals get the stop, and they should get at least decent field position here. Presley Harvin has had an okay season so far. He had a big punt against Buffalo 69 yards earlier in the season. Let's see what he has here. This one high and short, and the fair catch called for and made by Charles. Came in for both teams. Cincinnati with a win, has a 60% playoff probability. If they drop it, it's down to 20. Pittsburgh down at one percent if they don't emerge victorious browning in this Bengals offense from the 32 mixing on the handoff bounce it to the outside shows off the speed he's got a first down carry and cincinnati has to not completely abandon the run it's been tough sledding again just like it was a month ago in cincinnati but you've got to make this pittsburgh defense play honest a good run by Joe Mixon right there. Longest run of the day for the Bengals. And, and that was something that Jake Browning was pretty honest with us. He said that they have to be balanced, especially against the defense of this caliber. Otherwise, they're just going to take that one-dimensional aspect away from you. And it's felt like that's been the case at times today. But the passing game has still been pretty solid. Browning up over 270 yards. Another completion of Boyd for four. So I want to go back to the fourth down play. This has been the secret sauce for the Steelers. We got two new safeties. So let's protect them by playing zone, and let's count on these two guys to unleash fury in the backfield. Pressure with those guys, play zone in the back end. On fourth and five, typically from that part of the field, you're thinking man all the way from the Steelers. Zone defense, they get the, the turnover on fourth down, and it's worked very well for the Steelers defense so far. Mike Tomlin said that the menu gets a little smaller, especially without Minka Fitzpatrick out for today. Another catch for Yossi Vash as he just stumbles his way out of bounds at the 40. But they've done a good job of managing now. Patrick Peterson, just his second career start at safety, has seen his snaps go way up at that position in the last two weeks. And, and the one thing that Tomlin did mention to us that I thought was 100% accurate, he said it's different when it happens in game like last right. week. Minkin Fitzpatrick goes down in game. Now you've got to scramble versus when you've got a full week of preparation like they've had this week without KZ now suspended for the year and Fitzpatrick out with the injury. You can really make sure that you're scheming correctly to make sure you, you have the right calls for your system and for your players as Browning's going to fire on the run. Another catch for Tyler Boyd out of bounds. Yeah, I mean, the, the bad thing for the Steelers last week, it was consecutive plays. KZ gets suspended for the hit. He's out. The very next play, Micah Fitzpatrick injures his knee, so they lose two starting safeties in two plays and had to really scramble for the rest of that game against Gardner Minshew and the Colts. Peterson has done a good job in his spot. Eric Rowe over at the strong safety spot. Cincinnati moving it here, now second and four. Yeah, Trail by 14 points entering the fourth quarter last week. Browning dials it up. Separation. Yosivac makes the grab. And he is inbounds for a catch. One, one official set out incomplete. The other one said catch. Now it looks like they're going to agree on a catch. Heck of an effort by Yosivac. Does he get both feet in? Oh, it's almost simultaneous with the hand and the foot. It looks like that's going to be a catch. They're going to go quick and try to make sure there's no review. 22 yards on the pitch and catch. And now the challenge flag thrown by Mike Tomlin. A little surprising that Cincinnati wouldn't go and get that snap off quickly, but Tomlin wants to take another look. We'll see if Yosivash got both feet in when we come back.
the field reverse three-time Super Bowl referee Terry McCauley what do you see well no the rule is is that second foot has to come down in bounds before the hand touches at best it's the same time and that makes it incomplete he snap it by Jake Browning in this offense eventually bites them as they have to back their way up to the 34 yard line so it's third down and four instead of first down and ten Browning pumps keeps Browning gets rid of it incomplete and the flag is down through the direction of Drew Sample out of the backfield and we'll wait on the penalty here well this is kind of in the area we would think defensive holding as the quarterback was leaving the pocket holding defense number 24 it's a five yard penalty automatic first down as good as Joey Porter has been as a rookie out of Penn State he has been flagged a lot. This is his 14th penalty. He's arguing his case, but it was holding early and holding late. Those yellow gloves and yellow sleeves show up pretty bright <laughs> on a white jersey, too. Listen, I know that you like the traditional uniforms of both these teams, and the color scheme is obviously great, but it does pay the price at times like that yeah. when you've got the bright colors as part of your uniform as Brown picks up two yards on the catch and run. Porter second most penalized cornerback in the NFL but in coverage they've just loved his development they've loved oh. his aggression and really the confidence that he's played with as a rookie this season. Oh, he's played really well I mean his forced incompletion rate is higher than any rookie in, in pro football. Second down and eight now for Browning. Lofts it. Open. Oh, it's dropped. Yosivash had some space to work, and it's third down. I think when Yosivash had to go up in the air for this, his eyes started kind of trying to pick up where he might get hit from, and he wasn't able to secure the catch. He goes up. His eyes go off the ball and look inside to see where the defender is, and he's not able to secure the catch. Eric Rowe was waiting, biding his time for the hit. Third down and eight. Browning dials it up. Caught inbounds T. Higgins. Very similar to the play they did not convert on fourth and five. The last drive. He's running a little out route to the side. Porter's in deep coverage, it's zone coverage, and it's a well-placed ball by Jake Browning. Now a season high, 140 yards for Higgins, 307 through the air for Jake Browning. He's just putting together another statistically impressive game aside from the two interceptions. Handoff for Mixon, dancing his way forward to the 10. Runs into a Steeler wall. That steel curtain right there, Michael Walker comes up to make the play, and the 10th play of the drive upcoming now for Cincinnati. This third quarter dwindling down. Bengals had to come back from two scores in the fourth quarter. Eventually forced overtime on a late touchdown to Higgins last week in what was a win over the Vikings. Can they work their magic again this time in a division matchup on the road? Browning feeling the pressure he goes down Alex Highsmith he's too fast well this is why Mike Tomlin said make this look like a bad dis business decision they went and got Orlando Brown you make him look bad and he did on that pass rush too quick off the edge he's got great bend and acceleration to the quarterback and Jake Browning had no chance on that one Makes it third and 15. They will run it. Blitz coming. Sidearm caught down low. Mixon has no way to get up. And it will bring us to the end of the third quarter.